Yeah, I'll talk a little about the uh, accents and uh, what they're meant for. There's actually this like two kinds of accents, if you can say so. There's uh, in Japanese called the uh, Shitakusa and Kusamono, and there's a little bit of a different in tradition. The Shitakusa is meant as a support to the bonsai, and the Kusamono is uh, a little bit different. That is meant to stay alone. That will have the main focus. Sitakusa means a grass thing. It doesn't have to be a grass, it's a small flowering shrub, whatever. And the kusamona is more like more plants together, and they are in the focus. And they will be too much if you put them in a display with, with bonsai. And the main purpose of putting a shitakusa or an accent plant, as we call it, is simply to support the tree. Where is it living? What kind of tree is it? What would you expect to find? at the level on the ground beneath it. And that means if you have a color cell like this one, you might expect to see something like this beneath it that will support where it's growing. On a dry cliff, uh, on a hillside or something like that, because that is what the tree expresses. What would not work, just to make the example, if you put a small, this is also a grass piece, but this grows in the woodlands where it's very moist. So there you have a contradiction where the tree lives and where this supporting accent plant lives. And that would not work together. The same thing goes with the time of the year. You have to think about now we are in winter. So if I put this beside this tree, you have more than one contradiction. You have both the living place, but you also have the expression of the pot with small birds. This is more like a summer pot. So I would use this supporting a deciduous tree or a flowering tree in summer. So you have to think about the relationship between trees and accents. And you actually, a better word for accents would be uh, supporting plants because they support the tree, they support the history of the display. And when we are doing showing bonsai, uh, it's actually the same thing we do. Sometimes you can exchange a tree with an accent just to support this uh, seasonal feeling that is very important in showing bonsai. And uh, if it was a conifer, I would never put a flowering uh, accent beside it because it would be a contradiction. It would not, maybe, maybe if you find something like a little block or like a succulent with very tiny flowers, you might put it aside. And much of this has to do with your feeling of making a display. It is more like a feeling and there's a lot of artistic freedom. You Actually, you can do whatever you want, but in my opinion, I just think it has to support the tree and the expression of what you're displaying and not being a contradiction. It's a little like when you're making any kind of display, if it is a showing bonsai display with more trees, a seasonal approach, or it is a single bonsai. Uh, when you look at that, you have this uh, empty space behind it. The tree is the main focus of the, and the supporting action plant is the second thing in the display to view. And the empty space around you have to fill in with your own imagination. Where is this? Is it a, a hillside? Are you in the middle of a forest? Are you uh, around a small lake? And when we're setting up the bonsai display and using these accent plants, that is the history you should support with it. And if you take a look at the exhibition inside, you will see both contradictions and some that uh, succeeded in supporting the main tree. The second thing is that there is, uh, it is not just about putting anything in a pot and then it's fine. You have to grow them for some time so they have uh, the same expression as the tree. They have to look matured. Uh, you will never get this to look really old, but it has to fill in the part and look like it has been there like forever. It should not look like something like this that is not filling out the pot yet. Uh, it still has open spaces, so I would not use that before in a year or so. So I'm sure it fills out the pot and has this mature expression. This is getting closer. It has been living in this pot for one and a half season or so, and now it begins to set out new, 
new growth outside here and then it begins to look more mature. And the next thing you have to think about when you're putting aside a tree is, is the size. There has to be the right proportions. You have to take them to my Put these together. This one has almost the same height. So it will not work with that kind of tree. Then you have to use a tree with more volume or you have to, to cut this back. And what you do when you are doing your Cosomono or Chitacusa is also taking care of the growth. It's not just about putting it in a pot <coughs> and then forget about it, let it be. You have to train it like you train a bonsai. It's of course easier and not so complicated, but if you want it, or see the cruiser like this and you want to keep it in a smaller size then you go in and take out the longest pieces and not cutting like a hedge but going like you would do in a tree if you have a growth that is too much that you go in and take some of these long out and then you leave the smaller ones to come up <laughs> Work here. I'll not do too much because I have to talk at the same time. <laughs> but this is you take out the longest one and then they will come out smaller ones. And as this one matures, they will also get smaller. Exactly as leaves get smaller and bigger trees. What you cannot get in smaller size, and that is the same thing with bonsai, you can, you can make leaves smaller, but you can never make flowers smaller. They have the size they have. So when you're finding a flowering specimen, this will flower at a time, then you have to find something with small flowers that fit the size of the Shitakusa, the accent plant, exactly as when you have a flowering showing bonsai, you don't use specimens with very large flowers because it just looks odd. It has to fit in the size. And uh, you take care of them exactly as bonsai, you repot them when they're filling out and uh, it's begins to be difficult to water them, but keep them in the pot as long as possible so they fill out. This is the dormant season, so this is just a, in, as an example of something that is prepared to be a specimen that you use in the summer period, because these will come out with small uh, leaves and then white flowers at the later point, and this will be just lower, and then you set two things together. This can work both as a supporting piece for a bonsai, but it can also just be used to show alone. And that is the difference be between the Cosomona and the Sitakusa. The Sitakusa is meant to be as an accent, a supporting thing for the bonsai and the Cosomona. That can be the same things. It's more an, e an expression for itself and is displayed alone. And you feed them as you do with bonsai, but less. We don't need a piece like this. Actually, do not need any fertilizer at all because it is growing in the stones naturally and doesn't need anything else than what is natural in the ground. The same with this one. If I begin to feed this one, it will kill it. Then you have, uh, as an example, as something, if we have to put up this plate, I could use this one, it fits in the size, but if I use it the same size, this might fit in the size, this I just put it in a distance. So proportions is also about the emptiness you have around. And if I use like this very small one, I can put it closer. Do you take into account the lines of the tree itself, the angles? Yeah, uh, not the angles. The question is if I take into account the tree, the form of the tree. Not in that sense, but I take uh, the direction of the tree into account and I take the direction of this piece into account. So if I have a tree that goes right, I need a supporting ground that goes left so they connect because that's the same balance as you have in the picture. If people are looking out of the frame, the picture tilts. And that's it's only what this is about, is to get in balance. Why couldn't you put this one over there? Because if I did that, you have the tree here, 
and this going in opposite direction is like if you take a photo of if two people are talking, we are talking, we are looking at each other. If I do like this, we have no connection, and that, then it doesn't work. The balance is out. So it's very important the direction of the tree and the axis, or at least that it has no direction, so that the one piece points to the other. And every every bunch I have some sort of direction, but the accent doesn't have to have it, but they have, just have to be connected. And you can use all kinds of uh, scrubs, everything that is small enough in the leaf size and the flower size to support the tree you want. If you have a huge bonsai, of course you can use a, a, a huge piece beside it that has the same uh, volume. If you put this into a big tree, it will disappear. You also play with heights? Yeah, you play with heights. One of the important things when you uh, uh, exhibit, when we come into all this exhibition uh, thing with the bonsai is <laughs> that in the tradition of Japan, the bonsai is always lifted from the ground on the table, simply not to be connected to the ground. There are exceptions with forest styles because they have this uh, flat piece and sometimes look a little bit odd if you look, lift them too much. But the accent plant would always be supported on the ground, on a flat piece of wood or a flat piece of stone. And that is just a matter of tradition and expression. You don't have to do it, but that's the tradition of it. So we always have level. The most important thing, that's the bonsai, a little bit higher than the accent plant. So this works. One should stand on a piece, lift it a little bit, and this one a little bit lower. But that, <coughs> that has to do with tradition. We can do it otherwise if we want, but it also because it works. Something is tradition, it's not a rule, but it also works. Yeah. Question? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. That's a good question if, if you use a tree as an accent. The tree is never an accent, actually. It is a tree. But you have, uh, in the two pieces displays you made, you may see a, a large bonsai. I think you think about that. There is a, a conifer in there, a pine, I think. And then you have a small Yoshitis tree without leaves as a supporting plant to the main tree. But that's actually a way of displaying bonsai too. But you also have the accent planting beneath, supporting the whole display to show this place of living. And these, the difficulty with this is if the lowest tree is supporting the largest tree or not. Are they in opposition? Like I'm talking about the accent, they have to be connected in some way. Is it a natural field you're looking at or is it in contradiction with that? And that is what we call the two piece to play. You have two bonsai and then you have the axle. But in that, uh, in that example, it's very important that the accent is following the smallest of the two pieces. You have a main tree and you have a supporting tree. And the accent goes with the supporting tree because the supporting tree is the one that shows the season. And therefore, these two pieces is underlining the main tree. You can do different, but that is the tradition of doing that and understanding how you're setting that up. And there, the accent planning is very important to show that. Yeah? You talked about the positioning, yeah? Yeah. What about the front and the left? So the oh, the depths, if you, you change, this question is if you change the depths of the tree and the accent. You can say, and we are back in the tradition and how, to, no rules, but uh, what, what often works is that you will never put the tree in front of the accent. You, will, you can put them on line, the same line, or you can put them a little in the front to make a little bit of tension in this display. And here we talk about displaying that is very formal or more informal. The more, the more formal they are, the more calm the tree is. I will never use this in a very formal display. Then I will use a more straight tree that is not so expressive and not uh, so uh, direction oriented. And then I will use a calm accent plant to support this formal display. And I will put them online. If I have this tree, 
I could easily move this in a little bit of front to make more tension. So it's much about is it very formal or more informal? Yeah? Other questions? Reporting that is done in spring, like everything else, uh, and let them stay as long as possible in the pot to fill them out. It's not necessary. Maybe this has been in the pot for three years now, and I know that uh, well, <coughs> this piece has been there for five years now. I have not removed anything. What I have done is put a little bit of fresh soil in between, but it will be washed away with time. But they, they like it like that, so that's not a problem. Maybe two years more, I have to do something. And the pieces like this, it's the same thing. If you, they will outgrow at a time because. This time I think this is outgrowing a little, so the only thing I do is that I remove something that is very wrong pieces and maybe let this be, then you, then you have the form. So it's very simple to do it, but you have to do it so it's not just slubbing it out. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, thanks a lot, Martin. Okay, <laughs> so welcome.